This video shows an inside view of a Holmes Model 2 version 2 time lock case. And this view is with the time lock movement removed. The purpose of this video is to show how the emergency opening uh, mechanism worked on this particular time lock. Now, as seen in the other parts of the website, there are two paddles here with pendulums, and you can see that moving like so. And the other one here, there are two of them, and this one moves like so. These are driven electromechanically through two electromagnets here and here and are fed through uh, power from the outside of the vault. In case both time lock movements should fail, there is a exterior clock with a pendulum that can be moved, which upon each contact left to right will send a signal, which will in turn then move one of these and then in sequence this one back and forth which is then driven through uh, a series of gears, through this worm, through this wheel, and then ultimately will move the uh, time lock to open after a very, very long number of these moving back and forth. Now this is geared purposefully so that you would need this to move thousands of times. The reason why there are two pendulums in here is to avoid the uh, option of the uh, operator outside the vault to try to tap this very, very quickly. He won't be able to do that because the pendulums offer some momentum and resistance. So you can really only move it about once every half a second or so. It's impossible to uh, try and tap the contacts like this it won't it would not allow it to do that because of the weight of this pendulum now one can see here the movement in the front and if i tip this over just a little bit you can see the gear that would be engaged here that would then be engaged in the gear in the back and ultimately this would move this gear just enough to start to move this dial, which would normally be engaged with both of the time locks here and here. But if both of them should be disabled for some reason, then it could manually be moved to rotate this dial around and then ultimately open the lock. And of course, the key to all of this is really the reduction gearing that's contained in this area here. Each time one of these is tapped, it moves this little worm gear here by just a little bit of a ratchet. There's a ratchet inside of this, and you can see the ratchet on this part here operating because it, it bounces a little bit and that's the ratchet catching the uh, worm. Then the worm is hooked to this wheel, and this wheel then has another reduction gearing until it finally reaches this bottom uh, gear here, which is what engages with the time lock movement. All of this requires many, many movements, uh, basically thousands, which of course ensures that nobody can get to the outside of the vault and open it manually uh, without authorization because it would take so long to do this that the next business day or even two business days would have to pass before they would be able to unlock the vault using this method.